Hey gang, it's your old buddy Platt, and today I'm going to show you how to make homemade champagne. So let's go. So a while back I did a video on something called Pat's Backcountry Beverage. It was a little pack of malt extract that you would add to water, and then you would take one of these soda stream machines and carbonate it, and it was kind of like instant beer, for lack of a better term. The product itself wasn't great, but it gave me a good excuse to buy one of these soda stream machines, and I've been kind of playing around with some flavors and different ways to use it. And one of the first things I thought of when I bought this was, how about some homemade champagne? Um, a home brewing, you know, how you normally would get carbonation is through bottle conditioning, but sometimes... You know, it varies from bottle to bottle. Consistency can kind of be an issue, especially if you're new to home brewing. So I thought the soda stream machine would be a great way to have a consistent level of carbonation. Um, also, what you may or may not know, in champagne, the carbonation level is higher than that in beer. Um, bottles of beer would not work in champagne because of that. You would either blow off the top or have bottle bombs. Champagne bottles are thicker glass, can handle more pressure. And they also have the cage on top of the cork that really makes sure that cork stays in. So, um, my regular home brewing setup, I could not do regular champagne, you know, style wine at, at that kind of carbonation level. But with the soda stream machine, I kind of pushed the carbonation level a little up because the container it comes with twists and is sealed and it's, it's built for, you know, the pressures of... Uh, producing soda. Um, this is going to be a real easy experiment. Um, I thought about originally putting this video in my homebrew experiment series that I've just started, but this I'm not really, I don't think I'm uh, breaking any new ground. I'm just kind of making my life simpler with the carbonation. Um, all we're going to do is take a gallon of white grape juice. Um, I guess conceptually you call this a block to block. Um, some sugar. I know a lot of you out there always write my videos. Ah, oh, what's with the sugar? It's too much sugar. Diabetes. Blah, blah, blah. The sugar's not for you. It's for the yeast. Um, I think I've said in a couple other videos. The grapes, regular table grapes, and that's why it's used for this juice, has less sugar than regular wine grapes. So to get, again, enough sugar, if we're making a wine, we need additional sugar for that yeast. And also to, again, make it through the process to have some kind of sweetness at the end. So that's why we add additional sugar. Um, I've got a Premier Block Red Star yeast, so it's a white wine yeast. And then of course I have the Soda Stream machine, which we'll, we will use for carbonation. Um, I've got my parts, everything, uh, my fermenter sanitizing. So let me get everything cleaned up. We'll get the juice in. We'll do a gravity reading, throw in the yeast, and then I'll tell you where the process goes from here and how we end up with our homemade champagne. All right, gang, so we've got a gallon of our white grape juice in. I put a cup of the, one cup of sugar in there, and then these yeast pack that you get uh, in your local homebrew shop, what have you, um, I'll throw a link in below if uh, you want to order this. Uh, these are good for five gallon batches. We're just doing a one gallon batch, so roughly quarter or less of the packet will do. Uh, we are going to let this ferment for a week. Now, in contrast to our my video, uh, Simplest Way to Make Booze, that was basically just homemade wine, uh, we just let it ferment for a week and then we drank it. Um, what we're going to do here is let this ferment for a week, put in a secondary, uh, for a couple of reasons. A, just to you know, let the product mature a little, uh, more and also we want to clear this uh, champagne's clear um, some of the homemade wines beers stuff I make had a little haze from the yeast so we're going to we're going to try to make the product as clear as possible so we're going to leave this in ferment or uh, leave this in the primary for one week and then I'll rack into a secondary fermentation and then I'll add something called potassium sorbate and, and I'll show you how that's done but we'll go ahead and add the potassium sorbate, and then I will put this in the fridge, 
and that will crash all the yeast cells that still made it over into secondary fermentation and kind of help clear our base wine. So, and then I'll filter through a coffee filter. I'll talk about it uh, in, in the next section, but um, we're going to get this as clear as possible, as clear as the, try to get as clear as the original juice we started with. And then when we carbonate and finally drink in a little wine glass, the, the appearance will be almost champagne-like. We're going to try to make it as clear as possible, as bubbly as possible. Um, again, try to make our, our homemade champagne the best we can. So I'm going to let this sit for a week, and then we'll come back and put it in the secondary. All right, so it's been one week, and uh, we've uh, had our wine the fermenter. I've gone ahead and transferred it into a secondary fermenter. Um, did a gravity reading. Our original gravity was 1.080. Uh, I just did a gravity reading. We're at 1.00. So we're at 10.5% alcohol by volume, which is kind of what I was shooting for. So the yeast has done its job so far. It's still fermenting. Uh, when I was transferring over, there's still a lot of bubbles, a lot of CO2 still in the solution. So I know the yeast is still working. Um, I'm going to go ahead though and try to stop the fermentation. I could probably get a little, maybe an extra percent or so of alcohol provided by it, but that's fine. I also want to leave a little bit of the sugar in there for just a little hint of sweetness. This is homemade champagne. So what we're going to do is a two-step method to go ahead and end fermentation and get those suspended yeast cells that are doing all the work to go ahead and crash down and sink to the bottom and help clear this up because you can still see it's still quite murky. Um, first, I'm going to add something called potassium sorbate. Uh, potassium sorbate doesn't kill yeast. It does a couple of different things. A, it slowed down its uh, reproduction, so they're not creating more yeast cells to, you know, keep fermenting and staying suspended in the uh, solution. Also, it will curb the digestive process or the process of the yeast eating sugar creating the CO2. It's going to slow that slow that down and virtually stop it, which means eventually the yeast will die off just again because the digestive process has been stopped. And um, so I'm going to add half a teaspoon of that into here. And then we're going to throw this into a beer refrigerator I have. And the the dropping of the temperature will also cause the yeast to slow down and then eventually die out. If you um, ever threw one of these things just in the fridge, uh, you wouldn't get much fermentation because again, the yeast are just not gonna work at that temperature. Temperature is important to the yeast. So that's gonna be our two-step method. And we're gonna let this sit for about a week. Hopefully all this yeast eventually settles down. We're gonna clear up. And then we'd be ready to ferment uh, with our soda stream machine. If you've never used one of these before, they're real easy. Uh, if you're not certain how they work, you, I'll leave a link to the Pat's Backcountry video somewhere up here where I used it to review that product. Um, if the solution, if this, if our wine or champagne, homemade champagne, is not clear at the end of the week, what I will do before I carbonate is filter it through a coffee filter. Pretty simple step. That should take out any large larger pieces of dead yeast or sediment, whatever. Between those three things, we should have a fairly clear homemade champagne. Um, so I'm gonna let this go for another week. We will come back in a separate video. I'm gonna add this into one of our home brew tasting videos, um, where again, I have four or five products that will be ready to go. My uh, unhopped beer should be ready to go. Our ginger homemade ginger liqueur, should be ready to go and I got a couple of things coming up so we're gonna like I said let this add the sorbet let this go for a week and then uh, here in a couple of weeks you should see that uh, homebrew tasting video where you get to see the final product I uh, hope you like this video if you did please subscribe down below also please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content any questions comments concerns please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page Till next time, bottoms up.